Back here on the Saturday morning, Steve Cashel and Dr. Nick Verma filling in for Dr. Brian Cole this week at Sports Medicine Weekly. Our website is sportsmedicineweekly.com. And time now for the staple of the show, our Ask the Doctor segment here on SMW, giving listeners the opportunity to have our doctors address your specific sports injury issues. It's very easy to get involved. You just go to our website, sportsmedicineweekly.com, and on the home page, you'll see the picture of Dr. Cole and myself, and just click on that link, and you can ask the doctor a question. Dr. Nick, you ready for these? I'm ready. All right. Tracy Taro is our coordinating producer. Shane Reardon, our main producer. They do a great job in helping us put together all of this. And here's question number one for you, Dr. Nick Verma. What are low-impact activities uh, that I can do to keep my cardiovascular endurance up following shoulder surgery? This is a great question, uh, Steve, and one that I think is probably near and dear to your heart, given that you're in the middle of your shoulder recovery at this point and, yes. and eager to get back to doing some of the things that Can't uh, wait. are normal in life. You know, this is a question that we get frequently because many of the patients that we have, like you, who are undergoing shoulder surgery, are used to varying, living a very active lifestyle. And so the thought of being in a sling for a period of time which can be as short as one to two weeks, but in many of the procedures we do six weeks. Uh, those are the things that uh, uh, get people anxious about not being able to do their activities. So a couple things. Number one is early on during the first 10 to 14 days, that's really when we want the wounds to heal. We don't want you really getting too sweaty on us, making sure that we avoid an infection or things like that. But after that, the, probably the best way to get your heart rate up with a sling on is a recumbent bike. So that's the thing that we start Explain that. First. What is that? So it's basically if you go to the gym or the health club, it's the seated bike. So you're seated. Okay. There's a back like you're sitting in a chair. Your legs are in front of you, yeah. and then you're just pedaling the cycle, and you've got your sling on to the side. The other side, the arm is just gripping the handrail that's basically next to your waist. Um, so you can do it in a seated position. It's safe. We're not worried about you falling over with a sling on unbalanced like you may be in a treadmill. Uh, so the recumbent bike is probably the best way to get your activity up early on. And then as, as people are progressing, you know, the legs are clearly accessible. So things like uh, leg presses, mini squats, walking lunges, uh, sidewalks, those types of things are all good activities to help continue to work on your lower body. Once you come out of the sling uh, and you're comfortable, you can get back onto a treadmill and start doing or outdoor running on flat ground. The thing we worry about most is a fall. So be careful about the areas that you're in. Uh, and, and the then, weather conditions. And the weather conditions like we had on Saturday, unfortunately. Uh, and then... You know, the next thing is starting to do some strengthening work. And we start with core, lower extremity strengthening. And for the most part, we stick to the upper extremity strengthening with our physical therapy colleagues. Great stuff. All right, question number two here on our Ask the Doctor segment for Dr. Nick Verma this week. I'm a 30-year-old male doc who plays intramural basketball for fun with my coworkers after the games and during working out. My shoulder starts to bother me. It's something I can't push through, but I'm worried I'm going to hurt it more. It usually hurts for one or two days after, and then the pain goes away. Should I go see a doctor? Yeah, another great question. And so, you know, what I think people need to recognize here is that all of us have played sports or worked out, and I think we recognize what is typical post-workout soreness uh, versus pain. If you're really feeling pain, which is something new and different for you, and it lasts for any period of time, you know, most sprains, strains, soft tissue injuries will get better over a period of two to, to six weeks. Uh, if it lasts beyond that period of time, it's probably something that's worth checking in with a doctor with. As we think about shoulder injuries in, in terms of when you need an MRI is another question that we get fairly frequently. There's a couple things that I think about. Number one, is it, is it something that happened acutely with a trauma, uh, which often makes me think that there may be a structural problem? You know, you fell on the ice, for example, and then your shoulder didn't work right. Those are patients that were much more quickly uh, considering an MRI scan versus somebody who says, you know, I've been doing a new exercise or I've been playing more basketball recently and my shoulder is now sore. Those are typically tendonitis type problems that can most commonly be managed conservatively. Uh, and then, you know, the duration of time that symptoms are present. So once you start having symptoms that are present for eight weeks or 12 weeks, especially if they haven't responded to the typical things that we do for soft tissue injuries, so icing, anti-inflammatory medications, if you've come to see a doctor, potentially an injection in the office. If those things aren't working well, then that's another key to us that maybe it's a structural problem. But 30-year-old, pain with basketball, doesn't sound like there was any history of injury or trauma. More often than not, that's a, a soft tissue problem that can be managed very easily with uh, with non-operative measures. Another person um 
wrote to us, Doc, and said uh, about the shoulder pain, it keeps them up at night, and it has for the past few months. Got an MRI a few years ago that my doctor said was fine. Should they get another MRI? Because I started with that shoulder pain as well at night. That's what kind of got me into the emergency, or I should say the operating room. Yeah, and I'll tell you, that's probably what gets many people into our office is the nighttime pain is miserable because uh, during the day, they're tolerable with it. They can move their arm. They don't feel it as much. But for whatever reason, the shoulder is a joint that's very prone to nighttime discomfort, probably because uh, we're resting, so we're more uh, aware of the pain. But also the position of the shoulder changes because there's no gravity when you're in a, a laying down position versus a sitting up position. So nighttime pain, depending on the age of the patient, uh, is something that makes us think about things like rotator cuff problems or arthritis problems. It doesn't necessarily mean that we would trigger an MRI right away. We would still use all of the other criteria that I talked about, such as, you know, was there an injury or not an injury? How long has it been going on for? Did you respond to some conservative care? And then, of course, you know, part of the, a big part of what we do is the physical exam portion of it to make a determination. Do we think it's structural or non-structural? Great stuff, Dr. Nick Verma. Doc, thanks so much for joining us this week and filling in for Dr. Brian Cohen. I know you're going to be with us uh, next week as well, so look forward to uh, that show. It's always fun, Steve. Thanks for having me. That's Dr. Nick Verma, head team physician for the Chicago White Sox orthopedic surgeon from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. We're out of time. Many thanks to our producer and board operator. He is Shane Reardon. Our coordinating producer is Tracy Torrell. Also want to thank David Cole for managing our website and our business operations, as well as Samantha Smith from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. For Dr. Nick Verma, I'm Steve Cashel saying so long. Thanks for listening to our Sports Medicine Weekly Show here on The Score. Up next, Early Odds with Joe Ostrowski. Talk with you again next week for another edition of Sports Medicine Weekly.